Welcome to our lecture online. Now our first real example of how to do a line integral. We're going to make a very simple example. So let's say we start off with a semi-sphere that has a radius of r, uh, and r being equal to 5. And so the surface of that semi-sphere can be defined as z. It's going to be a function of z. So the height above the xy plane is going to be a function of the position in x and y. And as an equation, this will look like z equals the square root of 25 minus x squared minus y squared. Now we're going to integrate from a to b along the ridge of that. And we're going to integrate along the xz plane in such a way that Whoa, I got these reversed here. Let's change that. I like to call this y and let, let's call this x in such a way that the x doesn't change. x will be constant at equal to zero and y, of course, will change depending upon where on the ridge I'm going to be. The line integral along the surface of that semisphere from a to b is going to be equal to the area underneath that curve, underneath that line. And so think of it as a curtain hanging down. We're trying to find the area of that. Now you can see that that's uh, the area of a quarter of a circle, because if we have a full circle, this is just a quarter of it. So the area should be 1 quarter pi r squared. Since r is equal to 5, it's 1 quarter pi 5 squared, or 25 over 4 pi. That's the answer we should get when we do a line integral along that ridge there. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's our line integral. We're going to integrate along the curve from a to b. So we can go ahead and put a to b down, or that's what that curve means. We're going to integrate the function, which is the equation of that semisphere, multiplied times ds, which is a small little piece of my path from a to b. So when I sum up all the interactions, all the multiplications, those small little segments along the path, multiply times the value of that function, that semi-sphere, in terms of what's the z value at each of those locations, multiply those together, integrate along that line or along that curve, and that's what we call a line integral. Now since x doesn't change, I can assume then that x equals 0, so I can simplify the equation where I'm simply integrating from 5 to 0, from, from y equals 5 to y equals 0, Along that path, with x being equal to 0, y will be the only, var only variable. And my ds will then change to dy, since ds is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, and since dx is going to be 0, because x doesn't change, then ds is going to be equal to the square root of dy squared, or simply equal to dy. So let's go ahead and now plug, plug that function in with x being equal to 0. So this becomes equal to the integral from 5 to 0 of the function, which is the square root of 25, which is 5 squared, minus y squared times dy. So now we have to know what that integral is. And if you remember, or if you don't remember, just go to an integral table. This is equal to 1 half times the quantity of y times the square root of 25 minus y. And of course, that would be y squared. And uh, let's see here, that would be plus, uh, let's see, that would be 25 times the inverse sine of y over 5. And then we evaluate that from 0 to 5. All right. Mm, is that a plus or a minus? Can't see quite here. remember. Yep, it's a plus. All right, so I got that right. Now, next, we're going to evaluate it by plugging in values. Now, clearly, when we plug in the lower limit, we get a 0 times this. This is 0. And the lower limit here, the arc sine of 0, that would be 0 as well, because when uh, the angle is 0, the sine of that would be 0. So we only need to worry about plugging in the upper limit. And so this becomes equal to 1 half times 5 times the square root of, oh, look at that, that also goes to 0 because I get 25 minus 25, so this goes to 0 anyway, plus 25 times the inverse sine of 5 over 5. So that's the inverse sine of 1, well, that would be at 90 degrees or pi over 2, so this cannot be written as, so this goes to 0, that would be 25 over 2 times pi over 2, which is equal to 25 
pi over 4, which is the same result that we got here by simply calculating the area of a quarter circle. But here you can see that integrating, doing a line integral from A to B along the surface defined by this equation, along the ridge, so where x is equal to 0, to make things a little bit easier, you can see that that does indeed give you the area underneath the curve. And that's a really good way of understanding what a line integral is.